Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm answering a question from an end of topic worksheet I gave my students um, from P4 differentiation. This is a topic, end of topic worksheet number five, and this is question number five from that worksheet, which is also question number seven from the Solomon E of old C4 collection papers. Mm -hmm. And part A is asking us to prove that the differential of a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of x lin a. Okay, so this is a proof that we're sometimes required to show. All right, so this is a result we should know even in P3, um, we use this result, but it's just something that can be proved using what's called implicit differentiation, which I'm going to show you how to do with now. So basically what we do first is we say, okay, let y, let y be a to the power of x. All right, so our objective is to find dy dx. Right now, we don't know how to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite this by taking the lin of both sides of this equation. So if I take the lin of both sides of this equation, I'll end up with lin of y equals the lin of a to the power of x. And then using the power law, I can say lin of y is equal to x times the lin of a. Now what I can do is I can take... I can uh, find the dy dx, I can differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I have the differential of lin y with respect to x equals the differential of lin, sorry, of x times lin a with respect to x. So basically what we're doing is we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. We are differentiating both sides with respect to x. Okay, and that's actually what's happening when you differentiate something normally. When you're finding, for example, you get y equals, say, 4x cubed, and you differentiate that actually what you're doing is you're differentiating this side with respect to x and you're also differentiating that side with respect to x we just don't normally write this step we normally just say oh y equals 12x squared but that's actually what we're doing this is actually what's happening when we're differentiating and that will help us to understand what this implicit differentiation is which this is part of the chapter of because we have to differentiate lin y with respect to x and y is a function of x, so we're going to actually use what's called the chain rule here. Okay, so first of all, when you differentiate the lin of something, you get 1 over that thing. So it's 1 over y, but then when you're dealing with the, the chain rule, you have to multiply what you differentiated by the differential of what's inside the function. So we multiply this by the differential of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. Okay, so that's why we write dy dx when you differentiate something in terms of y. And that's equal to... Well, this is x lin a. Lin a is just a constant. Okay, a is just a constant. It's like a number. All right, so when you differentiate 3x, for example, you get 3. Okay, you drop the, the x term because this is like x to the power of 1. Multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. So you multiply by the power, you get 1 to the power of 0, which is just 1. So you're left with just lin a. So this will give you lin a on this side. And so now what we can do is you can multiply both sides by y. So left with dy dx is equal to y times lin a and if you remember from the beginning we said let y equals a to the power of x so i can replace this y with a to the power of x and i've proved it so i can say dy dx is equal to a to the power of x lin a as we know that y is equal to a to the power of x as we stated in the beginning so this is as required for us to prove and so that's part a okay the proof of the differential of a to the power of x is a to the power of x times lin a. Okay, that's um, the proof that we need to know how to prove sometimes, and we definitely need to know how to quote this. That leads us now to part b of the question, which says a curve has equation y equals 4 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x minus 1 plus 1. Show that the tangent to the curve at the point where it crosses the y-axis has the equation given below. So the tangent to the curve at the point where it crosses the y-axis. Now it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. So we want to find the tangent to the curve, the tangent when x equals 0. So first of all, let's find the point where x equals 0. So when x equals 0, y is going to be 4 to the power of 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 1, which is 2 to the power of minus 1 plus 1, which gives you 1 minus 2 to the power of min minus 1 is a half plus 1, that's going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 minus half, which is 3 over 2. So the point that we're looking for is 0, 3 over 2. That's the point at which you want to find the tangent. I'll just call it P. And we also need 
to find the equation of the tangent, we need to have uh, the gradient of the curve at the point. So we need to find the gradient of the tangent when x equals 0. So we need to find dy dx when x equals 0. So first of all, we need to find dy dx. So dy dx is going to be, if you differentiate this, you'll have 4 to the power of x lin 4. Okay, as we learned the result just now, a to the power of x, when you differentiate, it gives you a to the power of x lin, lin a. So this is 4 to the power of x lin 4, and this would be minus 2 to the power of x minus 1 lin 2. And the constant will become 0. So that's dy dx. We need to find dy dx when x equals 0. So that will be the gradient of the tangent at p. That's 4 to the power of 0 lin 4 minus 2 to the power of minus 1 lin 2. Okay, now you see we want to give the we want to give the equation in terms of lin two. So what I'm going to do is this becomes one, four to the power of zero is one, so I have lin four minus a half lin two. Okay, so now we want everything in terms of lin two. So I'll rewrite lin four as lin two to the power of two. Okay, that's also lin four. We use a power law. Minus a half lin two. So we can now say this is two lin 2 minus a half lin 2 so 2 minus a half is 3 over 2 so it gives me 3 over 2 lin 2 so we now know the gradient of the tangent is equal to 3 over 2 times lin 2 so now we can use our equation y minus y1 in fact we have this is the y-intercept so we can just say straight away y equals mx plus c this is c c is 3 over 2 basically the y-intercept because when, that's when x equals 0. So we can just straight away say uh, y equals m, which is 3 over 2, lin 2, plus c, which is 3 over 2. So if you rearrange this, you can multiply both sides by 2. You have 2y equals ah, 3 over 2x, mx. So it's going to be 3 over 2, lin 2, times x, okay, plus 3 over 2. So you can uh, multiply both sides by 2. So you have 2y equals, I'm going to call it 3x lin 2, not to confuse the x. The x is not part of the lin. The x is separate from the lin. So I'm going to write 3x lin 2 plus 3. Just multiplied everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And they want everything to be on one side with the x term positive. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let's subtract 2y from both sides. 3x lin 2 minus 2y plus 3 equals 0. And just write it the way they ask us to write it. 3 to the power of 3x lin 2 minus 2y plus 3 equals 0. 3x lin 2 minus 2y plus 3 equals 0. So there's the answer to part B. We've shown that the tangent of the curve at the point where it crosses the y-axis has this equation. I think this was a part of the question that the student was actually asking for. But I'll just answer the rest of the question as well. So part C it says here find the exact coordinates of the stationary point of the curve. So for us to do that, we need to find dy dx. We already found dy dx, but it wasn't too much of a hassle, so I'll just write it again. dy dx is equal to 4 to the power of x lin 4 minus 2 to the power of x minus 1 lin 2 plus 0. So the stationary point is when dy dx is equal to 0, when the gradient is 0. So we're going to have 4 to the power of x lin 4 minus 2 to the power of x minus 1 lin 2 is equal to 0. We have to solve this equation. Now, what I'm going to do to make it easier, I'm going to rewrite 4 to the power of x. Now, 4 to the power of x, I see I have a 2 to the power of x minus 1. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the power of x squared. That's the same as 4 to the power of x, because this is like 2 to the power of 2x. I can multiply the powers, so I have 2 to the power of 2x, or I can have 2 to the power of x squared. Both of them will give me the same thing as 4 to the power of x. And 2 to the power of x minus 1 is like 2 to the power of x divided by 2. 2 to the power of 1, you subtract the power. So this is like 2 to the power of x over 2, which is like a half 2 to the power of x. So I'm going to rewrite 4 to the power of x as 2 to the power of x squared. And I can rewrite lin 4 as lin, to the, lin 2 squared. So I can make the, lin, the lins have the same, uh, you know, same number in front of them. And this is going to be minus, sorry, minus a half um, 2 to the power of x, half times 2 to the power of x, lin 2 equals 0. 
So now I can multiply by 2 here. I have 2 times 2 to the power of x squared times lin 2 minus, this would be a half times 2 to the power of x lin 2 equals 0. I can divide both sides by the common factor of lin 2. Okay, um, so I'll have 2 to the power of 2x all squared minus a half 2 to the power of x equals 0. And I have a quadratic here. This is like, you can say, a described, quad, disguised quadratic. I have 2 times something squared minus a half times something. Let me say let b equals 2 to the power of x. Just to make it more familiar, this is 2b squared minus a half b equals 0. We can get rid of the fraction, multiply both sides by 2. 4b squared minus b is equal to 0. So I can take out the common factor of b. I have 4b minus 1 equals 0. So I have either b equals 0 or b equals a quarter. Now, if b equals 0, then that will say 2 to the power of x equals 0, which is not possible. 2 to the power of x never equals 0. The exponential function never becomes 0. It's closer and closer to the x-axis without touching it. The other option is 2 to the power of x equals a quarter, which I can solve. I can take the lin of both sides or the log to the base 2 of both sides, whatever, but it's easy to say this is 2 to the power of x equals, that's going to be like um, 2 to the power of minus 2. That's one, one quarter. A quarter is 1 over 2 squared, which is 2 to the power of minus 2. Therefore, x equals negative 2. So that's the x-coordinate of the stationary point, and the y-coordinate is found by substituting x equals negative 2 into the equation, which we have here, which I'll just bring down so I can see it. Okay, this is the equation for y. So if I if I replace the, the x with minus 2, I'll have 4 to the power of minus 2 minus 2 to the power of minus 3, because it's minus 2 minus 1 plus 1. That's going to give you 1 over 16 minus 1 over 8 plus 1. Okay, this is going to be like 1 over 16 minus 2 over 16 plus 16 over 16. So I've got 15, 16 uh, plus 1, 17 minus 2, which is 15 over 16. Yeah, that's 16, 17 minus 2, 15 over 16. So that's the y coordinate of the stationary point. So we can say the stationary point, the stationary point is given by x equals minus 2 and y equals 15 over 16. And there we have the answer to part c of this question. Find the exact coordinates of the stationary point. So that's like an exact form with um, fractions. And there's the answer to part C. Um, I hope that was clear. And other questions from this particular worksheet, the end of topic worksheet, can be found in this playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from this topic of differentiation from P4, which is basically implicit differentiation and also differentiating these type of um, a to the power of stuff. Although this is kind of very much also linked to P3, related to P3 as well. You can find the, those type of questions from P4 differentiation in the link that you should find in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the icon that appears in the middle of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you soon.